damn fun fair positive soccer ruining everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those, those kids should be drinking, right? <laughs> Welcome to episode 70 of Comical Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Corbett, and with me is... Miguel Garza! <laughs> <laughs> Enthusiasm. That's right. And of course, we have my lovely wife, Heather. Hello, guys. What's happening? And then we have a very special guest today, Mr. Zach Gorman. Hello. <laughs> a little less enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Well, we got a lot to talk about today. So we're going to get right into things. What were your top two books this week, Miguel? Uh, number two this week, God Hates Astronauts number seven. Really? Yeah, I know you're looking at me because I like, <laughs> I've not been a big fan of this book. I mean, I laugh here and there, but oh my gosh, this is a funny book. This is probably the funniest one I've read out of all of them so far. The whole Charles Soule thing was like was so <laughs> freaking hilarious. I missed the whole battle between him and the ghost. Yeah, Ryan Brown is the writer, and uh, I'm, I'm a friend of his on Facebook, and I follow him on Twitter. Uh, so a few months ago, he created the 3D Ghost Twitter account and then apparently had a war with his own personal Twitter account and kicked 3D Ghost off the book or 3D Ghost left the book or something. And then uh, he had Charles Soule come in and do all of the narration for this issue, which was really funny. Uh, it was a really good book. I laughed out loud probably 15 times reading it. Uh, that last page was amazing because he actually finally put a picture of Simon, his cat, into the book. <laughs> and I was just, it was just amazing. Uh, it didn't quite crack my top three this week, but uh, I did really, really like it. What? That book was amazing. There was like all kinds of alien abductions, kid abductions, people giving everybody the 11s. It was awesome. <laughs> I agree. It was awesome. But there was a couple books I liked just a little bit more. It was just so wild. I mean, I, I can't even tell you the story. I was too busy laughing at Charles Soule's head every year, upside down, left and right, <laughs> talking about this. He's on the other side of the cover. Like, what the hell is going on? And of course, the picture of Simon the Cat at the end. That, was just outstanding. I can't even tell you about it, the book. <laughs> it's a hard, it's a hard book to succinctly describe because there's so much going on and there's so many bizarre characters and bizarre situations that everybody gets into that you can't really easily condense it into a short review. So if you like crazy, wild, out there kind of books, you're gonna love God Hates Astronauts, and I highly recommend picking it up the trades and catching up to where it is now because it's it's all it's a lot of fun you didn't use your word man anamorphic i can't even say it yeah there's tons of anthropomorphic creatures yeah. thank you very much <laughs> oh my gosh you and your anthropomorphic characters oh it was great seriously tiger eating a cheeseburger time traveling giraffe i can't even say enough have you read any of the god hates astronaut stuff zach uh no i have not <laughs> i'm so i'm so helpful I'm that's just... okay that's okay uh well if you get a chance you should check it out it is really funny sure uh what was your number one then miguel I'm go dark now Number one was Nailbiter 11 by fan of the show, friend of the show, Joshua Williamson. I'm not sure he's a fan of the show, but he's a friend of the show. Oh, he's a fan. <laughs> he better be a fan. Uh, so Nailbiter 11 by Josh Williamson and Mike Henderson, just amazing. It was my number one also. It's the first time you really see Warren break out of his composure. The whole series so far, he's been very composed, very deliberate in everything he says and does because he doesn't want to give himself away that he's still this psychotic serial killer. But this issue, the FBI dude captures him, ties him to a chair, threatens to start torturing him. Which does nothing to him. Which does nothing to him. He's not worried about his nails getting pulled off or his teeth getting ripped out. He's not, he's not concerned about that. So the detective or the FBI guy takes it a completely different route and decides he's going to start chewing on his own nails the way that Warren always did. Uh, which just drives Warren completely mad. <laughs> yeah, it's like, awesome. Those are my nails! <laughs> Breaks out the restraints like, holy crap! He's got crazy strength. Uh, it's just, it's awesome. And then you've got the whole story going on with the other detective who's finding out of all kinds of stuff about the Buckaroo Butchers, including the main butcher. And you find out about the bee guy. There's a lot of stuff that kind of gets revealed in this issue. And if you haven't been following Nailbiter, that's another one that I can't recommend highly enough. It's, it's a great, great series. That butcher part was intense. Oh, it was intense. <laughs> the whole book was intense. I mean, I love the uh, Warren going crazy, obviously, but that butcher stuff was like, oh my gosh. And then you, you don't know what's going to happen to her. So that's why it was my number one. <laughs> yeah, it was my number one as well. So what was your number two? My number two was actually Wolverine's number 13, <laughs> <laughs> which 
you know, that's a real surprising title for me to put here, especially after I kind of bash the death of Wolverine and all the spinoffs. But Wolverine's 13 is written by Ray Fox and Charles Soule. And I like Charles Soule. <laughs> and I'm sure that it was his influence on this that made it so enjoyable for me. But the story's all about Deadpool. So for the last few issues, he's been kind of accumulating relics from Wolverine's past. He's been getting lots of different suits and like lots of different tokens. And then in this issue, he tries to make himself the new Wolverine because he figures all these teams are missing Wolverine and they need him. So he starts out by trying to recreate Wolverine's origin story. And to do that, he feels like he has to fight a Hulk. So, of course, he goes and challenges She-Hulk to a fight. And at first, she's like, no, what are you talking about? And the whole time, he's wearing Wolverine's getup. You know, like he starts out wearing the, the suit from Hulk 181, like the old school, real short, spiky, black thing suit. And then, you know, She-Hulk kicks his ass, of course, because she's a Hulk. <laughs> of course. And then he moves on from there, and he starts wearing Wolverine's X-Force costume. He starts wearing Wolverine's Avengers costume and his X-Men costume. And he's just going from place to place, dressing up as Wolverine. And none of them want anything to do with him. Uh, nope, 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 nope. And th- the way it ends, I-, I just thought was amazing. This whole book is definitely the best book of the uh, Wolverines series. So I can't say that you have to read the whole series because it hasn't been great. But if you're a fan of Deadpool and you want to check this out, I-, I think you'll really dig it. Because it's-, it's a lot of fun. I thought for sure. I mean, going with Wolverines is a good book. I mean, it's funny because Deadpool doing all this stupid stuff and like, hey, Bob. <laughs> but he pissed She-Hulk off. That's why she kicked his butt. Oh, yeah. Call her weak. <laughs> Nobody writes She-Hulk like Charles Soule. But I would have thought you would have taken Night of the Living Deadpool on this one because that was pretty funny, too. <laughs> Night of the Living Deadpool actually had a lot of horse jokes. Yeah. <laughs> which, <laughs> which I couldn't help but laugh at. But I thought that this one was just a little bit better. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then, I think we both have the same pick of the week this week. I'm not kissing any butt on this, though. It was really good. Oh, of course. Our pick of the week is Rick and Morty number one, which was written by Zach Gorman, who we happen to have here talking to us today. So, Zach, why don't you uh, tell our listeners what Rick and Morty is all about, assuming they have not seen the amazing TV show? Yeah, it's kind of a... I've never, you know, I've never actually tried to explain it to someone who hasn't seen the show. I would just assume everyone has seen the show. But I had, I did have a couple of people come up to me at Emerald City, like, "Oh, this looks good. Like, what is it? Like, really? Okay, all right. Well, it's basically Back to the Future, but with it's sort of like an ongoing Back to. The, it's like if if they were more dysfunctional, I guess, and we're actually grandpa, grandpa and grandson. Uh, the Rick and Morty relationship does obviously like derive from that, and uh, they go on wacky science fiction adventures. And uh, yeah, I guess that's sort of that's a terrible elevator. That's a terrible <laughs> elevator pitch. I just get yeah. all right. So you have to excuse me. I just want to point out that I am when I'm recording this podcast, I'm incredibly sick, and I've been taking a bunch of medication all day trying to get over this thing I got from the that I probably picked up in Emerald City. So um, excuse me for not making a whole lot of sense, but I'm trying my best. We appreciate you coming on despite <laughs> the fact you're sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Well, yeah, it's it's uh, it, it's sort of that. It's sort of like a, a family science fiction comedy, I suppose. <laughs> a severely dysfunctional family yeah. comedy. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, they do kind of love each other. There's like a there's like a thread of genuineness which stay which sticks around despite all the weirdness on top. Uh, but yeah, very dysfunctional. <laughs> well, we're we're all fans of the show, and the show was created by Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland, and it's been running for I think the second season just started actually. Uh, second season has not started yet, okay. but it will be soon. Okay. So one season, I think it was ten episodes, and they were all just amazing. Yeah, I, I, did, I introduced it to you, Miguel. Yeah, you did. I tell you what, I'm like, what is this mess? I remember the first time you gave it to me, and I watched it like, oh my god, this is freaking hilarious, and I've been hooked since. I think it was the episode, the first one I showed you was the one where the dog takes over the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make you like me, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> where are my balls, Jerry? <laughs> oh, I tell you what, I, I can't get enough of the show. I love the show. So when we found out the book was coming out, I was like, oh, this is freaking awesome. I just laughed the entire time. And just like when we read some of the other books that are from TV shows and whatnot, you can't not help reading it and hearing their voices the entire time. That's all I heard. I heard their voices, and I just was chuckling away. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, 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 makes, uh, it makes writing dialogue uh, a lot easier, I think, when you're, already, when you're working with a licensed property where the characters already have such distinct voices. Uh, it, it's actually like – it's pretty easy to imagine the characters saying the lines. And so writing dialogue actually g- goes really smoothly, which is nice. So in regards to the TV show, are you working with them kind of like when you do this book? Or are they letting you do your own thing? Or uh, they, they give a thumbs up, uh, thumbs down to everything. But so far, it's really just been thumbs up to everything. Like they haven't actually talking to Justin and stuff and like sending emails back and forth, which are usually sort of moderated by Oni. 
but I have some contact with Justin directly, and uh, so far, you know, it's all just been positives. Like, nobody uh, on their end, we've gotten some stuff back from the network that's like, oh, you can't, we don't want you doing that. Um, but it's mostly just like little, you know, sensor things. You know, no, no, nothing nothing too dramatic. But as far as working with uh, Justin and the rest of the people who work on the show, um, it's all been totally smooth, and they've just kind of let us do our thing. Well, book one was spot on. I mean, it was amazing. It was great. I mean, you did a great job. That's all I got to say. It was amazing. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I'll second that. I really felt just like watching the show. I think you had the characters' voices just perfectly down. Rick was burping in all the right places. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just thoroughly enjoyed it. And I really liked the... Uh, the secondary story at the back. The I think summer spectacular. The, the summer spectacular, yeah. 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 Uh, actually, with the burping thing, it's funny. That was one of the only notes that I've gotten from Justin was that you, I had to turn turn down the the burping and the stuttering from the initial pass of the script. So that was I had I had more in there, and he was like, "Oh, you gotta you gotta pull back on that a little bit." So that was it. That was like the only note he gave. Um, that I remember. Well, I think you nailed it in the uh, final product. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard. It's hard to find the right balance because it does it does fill a lot of extra page space, but it's sort of necessary just to get some of the cadence right. Well, let's talk about issue one specifically. Um, so in this issue, Jerry is uh, griping at Rick and Morty about how expensive things are, and Morty has to go and get a job, or that's kind of the gist of what Jerry is saying to him. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, Rick takes Morty to this intergalactic stock exchange, uh, which he's not supposed to be at because he's already been banned, <laughs> and uh, basically uh, uses Morty to make a bunch of money. <laughs> yep. That's sort of the premise. Then there's also like a sort of an old school Doctor Who parody thrown in there who's kind of uh, just a throwaway, <laughs> a throwaway character. I don't know. that it, it, was, it was basically in there for like one joke that I had and I really liked. Uh, but yeah... That's sort of it, uh, and it's it's weird because it's you know it's a cliffhanger ending. I guess it's it's an ongoing like the episode isn't over uh, because it was just it was too hard to fit an entire episode into one issue, so it kind of spreads out uh, across three. And, it, and it's sort of you know I mean there's you know new B plots emerge. It's not just the same sort of thing, but that's uh, that's sort of the jumping on point. Yeah, cool. I had more questions in regards to the book and stuff, not on the particular okay, issue. Well, <laughs> jump right in. <laughs> Now you threw me for a loop. I'm sorry. Um, you said season two is coming out here soon. You have to be careful, I'm assuming, not to tell stuff from that season. I mean, actually, oh, take yeah. that back. Do you even know what's happened in season two? I guess the first question to ask you. Yeah, so um, so they sent me all the scripts to season two for that same reason. They were like, we don't want you accidentally. I guess some of the pitches I had put forward initially were actually kind of similar to some episodes they were working on for season two. So they sent me uh, all the, all the scripts for season two, and I I read through them. Um, I actually didn't read one of them because I just wanted to save one episode for myself that I wasn't going to spoil completely. <laughs> so I re- I read through almost all of uh, season two, and uh, I mean they're great, they're hilarious, uh, but it's kind of a bummer as a fan uh, having you know spoiled an entire season of a show I I love. <laughs> But that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. You lucky son of a gun. <laughs> there are some. There are some real gems in there. I'll tell you that much. There are some episodes that I was just like, "Wow, this is just super clever." Some super clever stuff. But uh, again, a great show. Justin brought it to me, and my one of my kids actually kind of saw an episode before, and he saw that I had him, and so he watched. Like, oh, this is great stuff. And so it's something we watch together. Now I have to pick an extra copy now because he wants the book too. <laughs> He's not getting mine. <laughs> so, did you actually? pitched only about Rick and Morty or did they come to you? Yeah, well, I got an email from them and, uh, I, you know, I was talking to James about, uh, at Oni, sorry, James Lucas Jones about it um, over the weekend and he was telling a different version of the story than I've been telling, but my version of the story, which I swear I remember, is that they sent me an email that was like, we're trying to get the license to Rick and Morty. Uh, what do you want, like, would you want to be involved in it, I guess? This is, this is more like his version because I swear they just asked me if I wanted to draw some covers for it. Anyway, anyway, so I was like, well, I really want to write it. Uh, is there any way I can write it? And uh, and then with that, I just sent like 10 unsolicited like episode ideas. And they liked them at Oni. Uh, and they sent those over to the people on the show, to Justin and Dan. And I guess they when they read them, they loved them. And uh, then I was basically hired. Like that was that was it. Uh, once once Justin and Dan were on board uh, to bring me on, that's, it was all all go, I guess, from there. So how did you uh, team up with CJ? Uh, th- you know, I'm not really sure how they found CJ because CJ is sort of uh, new to the 
to the scene. Like, I, he hasn't done a, a comic yet to this point, and um, he, I mean, he's doing a great, he's doing a killer job on the book. But I don't really know exactly where because that was either someone at Oni or Ju- I think it was Justin who actually found him, and I think it may have been uh, through like uh, like some of his like fan art stuff really, um, online, and just really liked it, and, you know, talked talk to him about doing the show, about doing the book, I mean, sorry. <laughs> They're very easily interchangeable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I make that mistake a lot. I'll say, like, oh, I'm writing a new episode. Like, no, I'm not. I'm writing an issue. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta remember that. We do that all the time, podcasting, too, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not a miniseries, though, right? It's gonna go, it's an ongoing for a while? Yeah, I mean, the goal is to do an ongoing. Right now, I've got, like, the first sort of contract I signed, I guess, was just to do through five. Um, we've, but we've already started working on uh, ten issues. Uh, so we have, I have, like, script, rough ideas, like, rough scripts, outlines, basically, for, for the first ten. And then, uh, I mean, they're already talking about doing the next five after that. So, <laughs> I, I don't know. It's all, it all keeps moving ahead. Every time I feel like I talk to them about it, they're like, okay, well, do you have a plan for, you know, 16 through 20 is going to be the next thing. Like, I don't know. I'll figure it out. But That's awesome. Yeah, so in theory, in theory, assuming it sells well, and uh, and it sounds like it, it has been, and you know, assuming people want to keep reading it, I think we'll just keep doing it. That is great. I hate miniseries. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, like I said, we'll do everything we can to help you here. We're big fans of it, big fans of the book, big fans of the show, big fans of Oni Press. So, yeah, you. you know, we'll do everything we can to help out. Yeah, actually, that I was really excited to see that it was coming out on Oni Press because it seems like a lot of the Cartoon Network properties are picked up either by Boom or Kaboom. Yeah. So I, yeah. I was pretty happy because a lot of Oni books are a little bit, they can be a little edgier than the other stuff. Yeah, it's interesting because, it, you know, because it is an adult swim show and not a Cartoon Network show, but it's still Cartoon Network's like licensing department that handles everything. So the the scripts that we do, like when, when we finish an issue or whatever, or a script for an issue, it, it does have to go through Cartoon Network's approval department, which is why I think we've gotten like some of the, some of the edits or some of the the ran into a couple of the small problems that we have ran into. Uh, one of them was, for example, there was like there's like a panel in the wall, and I don't want to no spoil I don't want to spoil too much, but there's like a panel in a wall that opens up, and and a bunch of like sex toys fall out of it, <laughs> and and they were like, well, those can't look so much like actual genitals, and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> So we had to go back and make them look like alien sex toys, you know. So I mean, it's stuff like that. Uh, but I think that would they wouldn't happen so much if it was going through Adult Swim. But Adult Swim doesn't have the, a department to handle this sort of thing. Apparently, this is what I'm told. I don't really know because I don't, you know, deal in the, this sort of fine detail stuff. But that's freaking awesome. awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the best example off the top of my head. But. There are other small ones. Like I drew a cover for the first issue that was the Emerald City exclusive, and Morty was holding uh, a bottle of champagne on the cover, and they mm-hmm. said, "Oh, Mort- Morty can't be holding a bottle of champagne." So we had to change specifically right on there that it was like sparkling cider or something. We just, we just wrote the lab- change the label, and it was like, "Oh, okay, well, it's fine now." But at least it was an some- easy fix. <laughs> yeah, some little detail things like that that bug them. So we'll see. <laughs> Damn fun, fair, positive soccer ruining everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those, those kids should be drinking, right? <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's more of like a teen book than it is like a kids book. But um, yeah, I'm doing. I was doing like a, I was signing up to do a kids, a specifically like a kids comics show that has like a lot of workshops and stuff for kids in Ann Arbor called a Kids Read Comics at the in in June because I, I'm from Michigan and stuff and I wanted to support the scene there and whatnot. And I like doing stuff for kids. And I do. I did like you know, Costume Quest was a kids book, and I've done. I like doing kids stuff. But I was like, but it's like the show is for kids and teens. And I was like, well, this you know, Rick and Morty definitely falls in the teen audience. Like I don't know how comfortable people are like positioning it as a kids property. But when people see licensed TV properties, it's all these the tendency is to assume it's for kids. So yeah. it is kind of a weird fine line there. That's cool. You do uh, you do like charity work for kids. <laughs> it's not quite charity. I mean, I'll, I'll probably have books there that I'll I will have for sale. But but it's but like I like I like doing the workshops and stuff, and I, I want to get more involved in that because I I just I just think it's a good thing to do. I think it's a good thing to support. I want kids to read comics. Us too. <laughs> yeah, we do too. <laughs> That's why. Maybe, I- maybe not. Maybe not Rick and Morty. I want them to read comics, but like depending <laughs> on their age, they, I might not want them to read that. Justin gives his kids sex criminals and. <laughs> I don't have any. <laughs> 
I mean, it's fine. Like, I, I, I think my, you know, my parents never really restricted a lot of the media that I took in when I was a kid. And, uh, like, personally, a lot of stuff that I, you know, I see people that I wouldn't think that was a, inappropriate for kids. But I see why some people might. So, yeah, it, every, I'm every single blessed. time, every time I give a gift to a kid, like for a Christmas or a birthday or whatever, I try to give them comics. You know, like, I'll find out what they might be interested in, then find a graphic novel or whatever I think they might like. Uh, I just think it's important. Kids got to read. Yeah, my kids love the comics you gave them. They, they, of course, my kids like comics, period. Yeah. All four of them. (laughs) I mean, I have uh, a couple old ones and a couple of young middle ones. I mean, they all like comics, and I don't restrict them either. I didn't restrict my daughter when she was young, and I don't restrict the two that I have now. Yeah, and seeing like an edgier comic doesn't seem as scarring as, as, you know, maybe if you like expose kids to some like horrifically violent movies or something where it's like real human beings on screen. It just seems like, seems like, I don't know when it comes to comics and cartoons, like I'm probably a little more prone to be lax on that, but I don't, I don't have kids. So I don't, I don't know. I think talk- every horror movie I can possibly think <laughs> of. <laughs> well, my wife is a big horror fan. So we watch a lot of those movies and they like watching me jump. <laughs> oh, sure, yeah. <clears throat> so the fact, I mean, we love independent comics. We read a lot of them. Um, we read mostly independent comics yeah, nowadays. We do read a ton. <laughs> um, you can't chunk Marvel and DC to the side. We get a couple few of those books too. Oh yeah, I mean we we read somewhere between twenty five and thirty five books every single Wednesday. <laughs> We're insane. <laughs> <fun>. <laughs> Are there any other books at Oni that they're producing that you would like to work on, or is there any other books anywhere else you'd like to have your hand on? Um, I'm working on developing, uh, an original series right now. That's, uh, it's, it's, a, I don't want to talk too much about it, but I'm, I'm working on developing a, a, a series that hopefully will be an ongoing and, uh, would be aimed at kids. So that's kind of my main focus right now. Um, aside from like Rick and Morty, obviously. That's cool. Well, you, you mentioned before you did one of the variant covers for Rick and Morty. Did you get your start as an artist or as a writer? Uh, it was kind of both. Um, I really got sort of discovered, uh, I guess, as, as much as you can use that term, I got sort of found on the internet because I was doing Magical Game Time, which was a, a web comic I drew about video games. So I was drawing and writing it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I went to school for illustration and uh, art's always been kind of my primary focus. The writing thing is kind of something I've fallen into because I liked comics and I kind of wanted to make my own. Um but yeah, when I like the way that I I write Rick and Morty, even is I I write it as layouts. Like I, I write uh, I draw I draw like rough layouts for the for the whole book because I I just have to kind of write visually too. So I, I would definitely always think of myself more as like a as like a visual storyteller than a writer. But it's just kind of where I fall. I think oh. it's pretty cool. You can do both. I mean, that's amazing. Like meeting talented people is pretty awesome. Like the one gentleman that does his own book by himself. I mean, he does everything, and I mean, we first his first episode, his first episode, his first book came out. We're like, man, maybe he was just trying to do it all. You know, it was too much well, for him. We, we talked about a book called The Empty that mm-hmm. Image is putting out. Uh, Jimmy Robinson does everything on that book. He writes it, he draws it, he colors it, he letters it. He he does everything, and the first issue was really really good. Everything except for the art, and the art wasn't even like horrible. It was just it, you could tell it suffered a little bit because he was doing so much. Uh, but I think the second issue we had a lot more time to prepare for, and it was it was better. It was a lot better. And the reason I was saying that is I was going to go with when you're writing a book and you know you can draw it and it's one of your favorites, and you see other the other artist is doing it. Do you kind of like eh, maybe you should do this a little bit better? Maybe you should try it this way, or do you let them do it on their own? Well, the only book so far that I've written uh, and had someone else draw has been Rick and Morty, and because it's a licensed uh, property, and I'm terrible, just terrible at drawing on model. I, I really have no room to, like, to like, make notes, really, because CJ is actually amazing at drawing on model and just like knocks it out and makes it look exactly like the show, and that kind of blows my mind because I'm just so bad at that. And I've worked in, I've worked in animation. I've worked on storyboards for some shows. I did storyboards for uh, Over the Garden Wall on Cartoon Network, and I did, I've done an episode. I did board an episode of Uncle Grandpa and uh, a couple other things. And but uh, my stu- my drawings and in, in my even in my boards where they're really supposed to be kind of more on model are super off model. I just can't. I'm really bad at that. So so well, I think kind of what CJ does is kind of incredible. <laughs> like I, I can't do that. This is a weird talent that I I don't have. Uh, so I kind of just let. I'm always thrilled at what I see as an output. Well, we have no talent, so we're impressed by all of it. <laughs> <laughs> so you hail from Michigan, and I know you probably attend some cons. Are you ever planning on coming cons down this way? 
Um, where are you? I don't. I actually uh, don't Texas. Know where I apologize. Texas. Houston, Texas. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I actually was talking about coming to possibly doing MondoCon. At oh, the end okay. of the year. Yeah. So that's that's the only one that I've I've actually thought about so far in Texas. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, I know some of the people heavily involved with the Mon- with Mondo and stuff, and uh, seems like it'd be a good time. I heard it was a great show last year. I think it was the first year, but I heard it was I heard it was pretty fantastic. Uh, we didn't go last year, but I had some friends that did, and they posted a billion pictures, and it looked like it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So, man, uh, got any funny stories you want to tell me, Justin? Well, it's time for that now, huh? Uh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I got a funny story. It's actually a recent funny story. This past weekend, Heather had a, a bad week. Uh, she cracked one of her teeth and had to get root canal and uh, wasn't feeling great. So she wanted to go down to Galveston and relax. So she wanted to go to Schlitterbahn, which is like a big water park down here. And I put up kind of a fight because I'm not really a big water park guy. I mean, I liked it when I was a kid, but when I was a kid, I didn't know any better. <laughs> As an adult, all I can think is there's been a million kids in there peeing all over everything, and I don't really want to go and swim in urine-infested waters. So I kind of fought her a little bit on going to, to Schlitterbahn, but we compromised. Yeah, we compromised and decided to go to Galveston Beach. And that's how her tooth got broken, right? No, her tooth, <laughs> her tooth was broken before then, right? Yeah. So we went to Galveston Beach, and it was really nice. I mean, it was a nice, cool day. The wind was coming off the ocean. We just kind of sat on the sand and... You know, it was it was nice. That was really the only way to describe it. It wasn't too hot. Uh, she spent some time in the ocean. I just kind of sat there and listened to music and relaxed. And right next to us, there was this family. And it was this mom, dad, and their small kid, their small son. He was probably, what would you say, four years old? Probably about three. Maybe three. Maybe maybe not four, but he was He was, he was young. Little. He was little. <laughs> probably between two and three. So they have this nice, huge tent set up. And the dad is inside the tent, passed out. From the moment we got there until the moment they packed up and left, the dad was passed out. And the mom's out there running around playing with the kid. And, you know, time goes by. We were there for three hours or so before they came back in and started changing, getting ready to leave. She woke the dad up, and the dad was trying to change the boy's clothes. Well, the boy (laughs) ran out the front of the tent, takes off running down the beach, and the dad's trying to chase him. And, you know, the boy's not wearing any pants. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's wearing like a little shirt, no pants. You can see his little butt, and he's like running down the thing, and the dad's chasing him. The dad can't quite catch him. And the boy runs up near the ocean, but not actually in it, does a Superman pose, and it starts peeing on the beach. <laughs> and I was like... <laughs> and well, then now- the dad pats him on the back like, good job, son. <laughs> and when he finishes, the dad picks him up and carries him away. And I turn to Heather, and I go, oh, now the beach is just like Schlitterbahn. There's piss everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Come on, man. <laughs> Doesn't get much better than that. You know that water's right? already dirty to begin with. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I said. I was like, dude, the fish and the and, and all the like sea creatures in there like shit, you know, in the ocean, so it's not any different, really. It's not human kids. I don't know. Something about human kid piss just, just the freaking me. water's brown. <laughs> it's dark brown. I didn't go in the water. I was fine sitting on the sand. Doo-doo brown. <laughs> Doo-doo brown. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you go down to South Padre, it's at least kind of blue. You got to go a lot farther to get there. Well, yeah, but still. <laughs> yeah. And the water at Schlitterbahn is chlorined. Hello. <laughs> yeah, but the yeah, the railings I... and the decks aren't. Well, don't touch the railings and the deck. <laughs> Just jump in the water. <laughs> yeah, and I, the first time I feel warm water brushing up against me, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> done. <laughs> I tried. I tried to convince him to go, but. Do you take hot showers? Yeah. Enough said. What, what is that? Some magical man pissing on me? When I'm doing? This is how you get clean. No, that's not how it works. Just get in the water. Yeah. Well, what about you, Zach? Do you have a funny story for us? Um, not really, but I did. I did have a run-in with um, the guy who plays Booger from Re- on Reven- in Revenge of the Nerds. Oh wow! Like, okay. At Emerald City, he was like really incensed about something. <laughs> so we were. I was like getting breakfast in the. Like the hotel, everyone stays in the Sher- Sheraton, like next to Emerald City, next to the convention center. Yeah, and I was great there. Breakfast. <laughs> they, they were very overpriced breakfast. It was like twenty five dollars. So like he was kind of justified in his anger. So we go there. It was me and uh, the guy I was sharing a room with, uh, Xander Cannon, who's another comics guy you might know. We're actually um, having him on the show next week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, because he does stuff for Oni too. Also, and uh, yeah, so we were having we were having, went there and it was like twenty five dollars and just uh, 
already kind of like it wasn't a great it wasn't like a great buffet any either uh and then you know i saw so we were sitting there for a while and like eating and i saw i saw a booger i don't know his real name i'm just keep gonna keep calling him booger uh, that's kind of that's kind of rude but everyone knows him <laughs> as booger from revenge of the nerds so anyway like he came in and he was like eating with like his i don't know probably his like handler i don't know they <laughs> his, whoever, nice. whoever was like the walking booger handler <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like walking buggers and like I already feel like he was like kind of in in a bad mood or something. Like no one was like bothering him. Like he doesn't have the kind of celebrity where I feel like people are like running up. I guess maybe at a comic show, like people are like running up, maybe bothering him. But like nobody was bothering him. It was like a real quiet. Like there's only a couple other people in this in the eating breakfast at this time in the place. And then like they had ran out of coffee, and I went up there to get coffee, and uh, he was just so like. It was just so like incensed. Like he was so mad. He was so mad about the fact that like they didn't have coffee. It felt like he was taking it as like a personal slight. And so he turned around. I just like happened to be standing behind him, and he just started complaining to me. Like like I don't know. Like like he thought like like like, like it was kind of like. Here's the weird part about it, because like I get it. Like that wasn't like a. It's not abnormal to be annoyed that they don't have coffee or whatever. But the way that he was talking to me, like, it, it was it was like he was starting to do a bit, almost, you know? And I didn't get that. It was like he started to kind of, like, uh, anyway, that was it. I, I don't know. And then he complained about the coffee, and he got his coffee eventually, and he seemed okay. But, but I, I was already sitting down after that, by that point. That's pretty funny. Yeah, it's, it, there's no real punchline to it, other than, like, I, I talked to Booger for a little bit when he was complaining about coffee. But he, but he seemed really mad about it, like, irrationally mad about it, so... Yeah, he plays. Uh, he also plays Metatron on Supernatural. Oh, so that might that might be why he was there. I don't know. I don't know what his I don't know what his cred is these days. That's not nearly as funny as Booger. No, Booger's funny. Uh, <laughs> I watch all the run to the nerds. Booger and his handler. That's great. <laughs> Should ask him to burp. <laughs> Booger needs coffee now. <laughs> Uh, you could have done the, you could have done the uh, the ogre part, Zach. You're like nerds. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. <laughs> well, we got a little bit of news for the week. A little bit. Moving on. Okay. Uh, what do you want to hear first? Comics, movies, or TV? I want TV today. TV. So the trailer for Ash vs. the Evil Dead was released okay. a couple days ago. Uh, it looks really awesome. Have you seen it? No. you got to go out there and watch it. Uh, Bruce Campbell, Lucy Lawless, and a bunch of zombies. Nice. <laughs> and she going, la, la, la. She's not going la la la. I don't even know how you make that sound. <laughs> She's not showing her chakra around. No, no. But uh. it, it looks pretty awesome, so you should go check that out. Uh, next, Daredevil showrunner Stephen DeKnight is. Let me, just, let me just take my headphones off now. No, uh, because I said Daredevil. <laughs> He's working with uh, the Marvel Knights people, the people that are making the shows on Netflix, okay. to try to get a Punisher TV show made. Oh. oh. Since they're doing a bunch of street level characters. Punisher would obviously fit into that. So would Moon Knight going forward if, oh. if all these are successful. So I think that would be a lot of fun if we could see a Punisher show. Don't tease me like that. <laughs> don't, don't bring up the Punisher and Moon Knight like that. Well, it's the showrunner for Daredevil. So, I mean, if Daredevil's successful, he might actually be able to get them to move on and do more street-level characters. Guess I'm going to have to watch some Daredevil now. Yeah, you got to watch it. <laughs> get on that Netflix. <laughs> you know I'll watch a Moon Knight series in a heartbeat. There are Punishers. You know that. Uh, you know there's going to be that spinoff of Arrow and the Flash that we talked about? Yeah. The one with uh, Captain Cold and the Heat Wave guy. Uh-huh. Well, they, they announced, I think, two days ago that uh, they've cast Hot Girl for that show. Yeah. And it's going to be Ciara Renee, who her only real acting credit is that she was on SVU, which I know is a show you're a huge fan of. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> weirdo. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and she's also a Broadway actress, apparently. I watched that show with my wife. Thank you very much. She introduced me to that one. Mm-hmm. All 18 seasons of whatever the hell it's on now. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, Funny that the two brothers playing the Heat guy and the you know Captain Cold, they were all, they also they're not brothers in real life, but they they played brothers in Prison Break. They were on the show together before, so I just thought, oh, those two guys. It's like everywhere you see one, the other one shows up. It's just like all the Spartacus guys showing up in Arrow and Flash. Do you watch either one of those shows, Zach? Uh, no, I don't. If you're if you're a fan of, uh, well, I, I don't know. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure you've heard from a lot of people that uh, that they're both pretty good. So if you were ever a fan of DC Comics, you might enjoy them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hear there's a lot, there's a lot of like like shirtless guys on rooftops, or is that just what Tumblr has has made me think of the show? 
Uh, you see him working out every once in a while in their base, but he doesn't really run around shirtless like fighting that guys. I, that was what I just pictured. Like from whatever the descriptions, like the, the, what seemed important to people on on the internet was just like the fact that he was tum- shirtless on on rooftops a lot. But um, I, that might be that might be a mislead. I'd say so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, the, the last piece of TV news is uh, they announced the title for the Walking Dead spinoff. It's going to be called Fear the Walking Dead. Well, we have some great imagination here, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> I think they just wanted to keep Walking Dead in there somehow to uh, keep it in the same brand. But Who's leading the group, Morgan? I, I'm not really sure. Uh, it's going to take place in L.A. at the start of the outbreak. But I think they could have come up with a better name than that, too. So we're going to have gangsters. Carol. Lovers. Carol's leading them. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have turned her into the badass of the show, apparently. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was pretty ridiculous. <laughs> That's all I got for TV. So what do you want next, comics or movies? Let's go with comics. Comics. Okay, so this first one's interesting. Uh, Dark Horse is apparently offering an ultra-rare variant cover for barbed wire number one. And the only way to get it is to mail in 20 copies of the Star Wars number one cover from Marvel. So it's the same kind of thing that Marvel did before with the Siege. Mm-hmm. Remember, you could mail in the, the entire run of Black as Night, mm-hmm. and you would get that Deadpool cover for the Siege, and it was ultra rare, and now it's like a $1,300 book. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're doing the same thing with Barbed Wire, which is obviously not going to be as popular as Deadpool or Siege was, but they're doing it with Star Wars because they're a little bit incensed that Marvel and Disney stole the property away from them. Why would I want to send in my number one Star Wars? <laughs> not, not you. This is for... Uh, Retailers. Oh, okay. If they have extra supplies, they can mail those in. Oh. But it's like a redemption thing to try to get a, an extremely rare variant cover. We both know there's no extra. No. <laughs> well, I mean, they're only like fourth printing now, so there might be. It's ridiculous. <laughs> we got a first printing. Yeah, we do. Next, uh, the showrunner for Arrow, Mark Guggenheim, uh, he's teamed up with Justin Greenwood to create a new Oni Press book called Stringers. You heard anything about that? Mm. Have you heard anything about that, Zach? No, I haven't. This is the first <laughs> the first I'm hearing about it. Okay, so it's a uh, mini series about a news team that's trapped between a bunch of corrupt LA police and some gangs. Sorry, you said mini series and I kind of <laughs> tuned checked out. out. <laughs> I checked out. I was already looking at the wall. Jeez. <laughs> uh, <it>, <laughs> they haven't released a whole lot of details about it yet, but I think uh Mark Guggenheim probably knows what he's doing with stories at this point. Yeah. And uh, I like Justin Greenwood's art a lot. So I'm definitely going to be checking this out. And, you know, m- most Oni Press books I do pick up. You know, I talk a lot of crap. You know, I'm going to pick it up, too. I got, like, a bunch of miniseries <laughs> in my boxes, so I'm still going to get it. But that one's supposed to be coming out August 5th. So okay. If that sounds kind of cool to you, which it does to me, uh, definitely pick that up. Is there anything that doesn't sound cool to you? I mean, because, damn it, we pretty much pick up everything that comes out. You know, there's there's books that are... Oh, yeah, that was that Chrono Knots you didn't pick up. <laughs> I didn't pick up Chrono Knots. Like, most Mark Millar stuff I'll read, but for some reason that one didn't grab me. Uh, I don't really pick up books that are, like, war stories very often, unless they have some kind of twist to them. You know, like, Mercenary Sea I like because it's, like, a small team doing their own thing while this war is going on. They're not actually, like, the people involved in the war. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not really big on war stories for some reason, but pretty much anything else I'll give a shot to. Hmm. Okay. So that was it for comics. Draft Dodger. <laughs> <laughs> going on to movies. Uh, the first trailer for Dawn of Justice is going to debut with Mad Max Fury Road. Okay. So they're putting the trailer out there even though the movie's not coming out to 2012? I mean, 2012. <laughs> this is like the fifth time you've said that the movie's coming out in 2012 when you're trying to say it's coming out in the far future. Exactly. Stop living in 2006, man. <laughs> you know the movie's never coming out. Uh, it doesn't look like it at the rate they're going, but I know I keep on busting their balls. But you know that movie? They'll have another change, another script rewrite. Hell, it'll be Batman versus <laughs> Aquaman by the time the movie comes versus out. Versus Predator, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Alien in there too. Yeah. So the trailer we will get to see May fifteenth. I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah. Well, you'll see it May fifteenth. Okay. <laughs> like I'm going to go see Mad Max. Come on. The biggest movie news, at least for me, is that Deadpool is getting an R rating. Wait a minute, I thought it was going to be PG-13. Thank no, God. No, it's getting an R rating. You, you haven't f- seen the video? No. Okay, so yesterday was April Fool's Day, and everybody was doing all kinds of stupid stuff on the internet. Right, so I didn't believe anything. Ryan Reynolds got involved in that, and there's this video of him talking to Mario Lopez for extra. Nice. And Mario Lopez is like asking him questions about Deadpool, and he's referencing the horrible version that we saw in Wolverine Origins. Mm-hmm. And Ryan's kind of like, yeah, I mean, that was technically Deadpool, but you know, the Deadpool you're going to see in the movie is a lot different. 
And then Mario says, okay, so I'm seeing here that the movie's going to be rated PG-13, which means it's going to be kind of family-friendly in places. And Ryan's like, oh, no, no, it's definitely not family-friendly. And then it flashes back to Mario, and you see Deadpool walk behind him and pick up a chair and then walk back behind him the other way and then smack him in the face with a chair and knock him off the ledge. And then he... <laughs> He holds up a, a little uh, sketch he's drawn on a piece of paper that that shows uh, Deadpool hitting Mario with the chair. And he says, that one's for you, Jesse. And he crumbles it up and drops it. And then he says, Slater he, can't hurt you anymore. Slater can't hurt you anymore. And then he says, uh, Deadpool will, of course, be rated R. And then Fox confirmed it today. Nice. So Deadpool is going to be R-rated. Sweet. Which means they can do all the decapitated body parts and... and all the crazy stuff that you want to want to see in a Deadpool movie. That's right. Me and my younger kids will be there with you. <laughs> I, guess, I guess enough people reached out and said that they wanted it, that they, they're they going to go ahead with it. And it's, then even before that, they uh, showed the first look at the costume, which they put out that image of uh, him doing the Burt Reynolds pose in front of the fireplace. Yeah, that's that was, pretty funny. That was funny, too. But, yeah, I'm really excited for that. Uh, so next, uh, they released a press release for Avengers Age of, Age of Ultron, and s- two people are on that cast list that nobody knew anything about. The first one is Julie Delpy, who I'm not too familiar with. She's a British actress. She's been in a lot of stuff, but I'm not familiar with her work at all. And the second one is Linda Cardellini, who I am a tremendous fan of. Uh, Stalker. (laughs) Some of the news sites are speculating that one of them is going to be playing the Enchantress, which would be really cool, Mm -hmm. and that the other one could possibly be playing Captain Marvel, which would be incredible. (laughs) I would love to see Linda Cardellini as Captain Marvel. Wouldn't you? Yeah, I think I would. I think that's a great choice. Captain Marvel. Huh. Uh, next, something that I know we're both fans of, Stephen Amell, was cast as Casey Jones in the Ninja Turtles 2 movie. Freaking awesome. Uh, the first Ninja Turtles movie, Ugh. not very good. It had a couple moments, but overall it was a stinker. I, I was not going to watch the second one. but Now, now I, you are. Now I feel like I kind of have to. You would have watched it if Casey Jones was in it, period, anyway. Well, I know Rocksteady and Bebop are going to be in there, and <sighs> Casey Jones. Oh. Uh, but now that Stephen Amell's attached, I, I kind of have to watch it. Big fan <laughs> of his. Suicide Squad movie. They cast Adewale Akinuye Agbaje. I can't believe I got that right. Wow. As Killer Croc. He's the guy that played uh, the, the creepy dude in, in Lost. I can't remember his name. The heroin guy. Okay. Yeah. So, Killer Croc in Suicide Squad. And there's also rumors that uh, King Shark is going to be in the movie. King Shark! Which I would love <laughs> to see. Um, Chomping on people. <laughs> <laughs> DC also announced this week that they are releasing a Batman 66 animated movie. And that the voices are going to be done by Adam West and Burt Ward. I saw that. That's pretty sweet. That's freaking awesome. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Adam West! <laughs> Adam West! You're awfully quiet, Zach. Does any of this sound exciting to you? Um, we love yeah, I mean, the, 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 the Batman sixty six thing sounds sounds pretty cool. You big, were you a big fan <laughs> of that watch, series growing up? I would I would watch that. Uh, yeah, I used to watch it. Like, uh, I mean, I, you know, I'm a little young to have been watching it at the time, obviously. But uh, like, you know, I uh, I would catch. They would run reruns of it sometimes. Like, uh, I'd seen a fair a fair number of them in my, in my day. I really like. I just like the design of it, and uh, I, I've like. Read one or two issues of the of the series and it's it's pretty cool. So yeah, we're yeah. big fans. We, we love the yeah. campy style to it. It's just it's fun. fun. Yeah, it's super fun. I think it's Encore or Stars. I can't remember which one it was. They show the reruns Saturday morning or even Sunday morning. It's like four or five hours of just nonstop thirty minute Batman's, the old school <laughs> ones. It's freaking great. I've gotten my my two older kids attached to it, and now my younger kids love watching. It was, That's awesome. They re-released the whole thing on Blu-ray like not that long ago, right? Like, yeah. Uh, it was like, okay. Season two just got put December, out. December, I think. Yeah. No, it was, it was like the complete. Collection. Oh, they did. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was the complete collection came out in December, I think. I got to pick that up then for Christmas. <laughs> and like one last piece of news: apparently, Joss Whedon came out and said that the Scarlet Witch's powers have been changed drastically for Age of Ultron. You know, in the comics, she has the ability to alter probabilities Mm -hmm. Um, in the movie. She is going to have telekinesis and telepathic abilities that are affected by fear. So I guess she's going yellow lantern. I don't know. What? I don't know. (laughs) Parallax. (laughs) I'm not sure what they're trying to do with that, but I I guess it is kind of hard to visually showcase probability powers. Are you happy who they got playing her? The Olsen girl? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen a couple of movies. She's a pretty decent actress. I I think she's going to be fine. I, you know, I'm not going to judge it until I've watched it. That's and you'll watch it how many times? <laughs> well, it depends how good it is. I mean, I watch Guardians of the Galaxy a bunch. <laughs> I know. <laughs> midnight showing. Yeah, we'll definitely be there for the midnight showing of Avengers two. 
And that's pretty much it. That's all, all the news for the week. Yeah, okay. So I want to remind everybody, there's a few places you can find us. We are on nerdbong.com, along with a lot of other shows, a lot of other good shows. Uh, we are on wickedradionetwork.com. We are now on yourcityradio.com. That's yourcityradio.com every Saturday night at 9 Eastern. Uh, you can also find us on iTunes, Stitcher, and now SoundCloud. Uh, if you want to follow us online, we're on Facebook at facebook.com slash comical podcast. If you want to follow us on Twitter, I'm at comical podcast. I'm at comical podcast two. And I'm at comical podcast three. If you'd like to follow Zach, you can find him at Zach Gormania. <laughs> I love that name too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> And do you have a website you want to promote? Uh, no, I mean, you can just... I, I, I rarely update stuff. It's not even worth it. <laughs> okay. And uh, make sure to go check out Rick and Morty, number one. It's in stores now, and it's a great book. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. So do you want to close out the show, Zach? Yeah. Uh, oh, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm the worst. I wish I could do impressions of the characters. Scary Terry. If you could do, yeah. you could do. Oh, oh, bitch. Keep on laughing, bitches. <laughs>